I am so excited about this event. I am Christina Lockett, host of A Message of Hope. This has been a wonderful event, a wonderful benefit. And one thing about it is they had live entertainment. They had music singers and they had uh, drill teams. But the family was adamant about this event being educational. And so I have with me Shante Tucson. She's a marketing director. Tell everybody a little bit about your position and, and how you assist people with strokes. My name is Shante Tucson, and I'm with Action Star and Progressive Physical Therapy. And what we do is we're outpatient physical therapy facilities, which help patients strengthen um, their muscles in times of weaknesses. When it comes to strokes, a lot of times people are misled and confused about stroke symptoms being strictly for middle-aged and elderly people. And strokes within the city of Houston or within throughout the United States, we have over 610,000 people suffering from strokes. And a lot of times, some of the difficulties after they've left the skilled nursing facilities, they have problems with gateway training. And gateway training is balancing and learning how to walk and to stand and to hold onto things without falling. Right. And so some of those are some of the things that we help patients with while educating them on strengthening their muscles. Okay. And we can help them with our upper extremity parts, which is called occupational therapy, which is from the shoulder, elbows, and hands. And then all over uh, muscular skeletal systems, which is physical therapy. Yes. Um, so a lot of times when you have a stroke, you tend to go to the skilled facility, you leave them there, you learn your basics, and then you go home. And sometimes, contingent upon your stroke, you will either have home health come in or your doctor will assign your occupational physical therapy. And those are some of the things we do. That's good. So I know that one thing you shared during the event is how we can prevent some things, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you help uh, clients to understand preventative measures? We do give out educational materials. I do have some of the information with me today. It talks about preventative. Some of the preventative things, um, as people don't can realize the preventative measure starts by simple daily tasks. It's about controlling your eating habits, cut back on your alcohol intake drink more water. If you have high blood pressure, please consult with your physicians to understand the best mechanisms that will work with your body, not work with your mother, your father, right. or your generational past techniques, or this um, homemade doctor syndrome, or internet doctor syndrome. Get with the skilled technician, the, the MD, and learn what's best for your body. Nobody's yes body is the same so you have to know your mechanisms that works best for you yes and one thing we want to point out is that um, people who are victims of stroke their recovery is not the same right it's right, very individualized right. and just like you mentioned you know sometimes you have to just work on the upper strength mm -hmm. sometimes they have uh, trouble walking things mm -hmm. like that and, and you all are able to assist them Right, right. Yeah. We, we want to be there for our patients in order to assist them in any the best way they can and stroke symptoms are totally different. I may have an activity of the limb where my hand is curvature. Mm -hmm. You may have an activity of the limb where your legs are weak. Right. Or someone may be twisted to the face. Mm -hmm. But we each all need strengthening in our bodies in those areas. Yes. Well, you know what? It, I'm, I'm grateful that you're here to share the information and just share uh, more about the resources that are available. Because sometimes people don't know what's available. So you did an awesome job today and shared with the, the congregation and the community. Um, would you like to just give Richard Dunn some encouraging words? Mr. Dunn, I would like to say it was a blessing to hear your voice this afternoon. It was a blessing to hear your voice this afternoon and knowing that you are paving the way for stroke victims out there everywhere, teaching and helping your congregation here understand the effects and the importance of knowing the preventive measures in order to stop them from ha ha having them have what happened to you is an awesome gift and a blessing that you have given to your ministry here at this yeah. church. And it is a blessing that in your time of weakness, you're still ministering to others. So I just want to say thank you for allowing me to be able to share this moment with you. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your voice and to know that you're still encouraged, to know that you're still preaching the word of God, to know that still the word says, but God. Yes. So I am. I feel privileged and honored to be here and blessed by your spirit. Amen. And you made a difference. You 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Shantae. It was a pleasure meeting you, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hi, I am Christina Lockett, host of the Message of Hope on Survival Radio Christian Network. I am here at Briar Chase Missionary Baptist Church. As you already know, there's a great event going on. It's a praise event, a gospel fest, but it's also an educational event, a benefit for Richard Dunn. And I have a special person with me. Her name is Jan Fluellen. Yes. Jan, tell us a little bit about what you do. I work with Houston Methodist Hospital as the outreach coordinator for the stroke program which means I get to go out to the community and provide education about what stroke is all about, how to be aware of what stroke symptoms look like, how to respond immediately to save lives, and then to share information for people who may want to have more in-depth information, either about preventing strokes, which is our big goal, or if sadly a stroke has already happened, how to prepare for the changes that happen with the stroke. All right, well, will you share a, a few tips with us? Well, the first thing we want to know is that we can prevent strokes. About 80% of strokes can be prevented if we know what causes them and how to keep the risk factors under control. And the easy thing to know is that everything you already know that's good for your heart health is also good for stroke. Okay. Because the disease process is almost identical. Mm -hmm. So a stroke is kind of like having a heart attack, only it happens to your brain instead of to your heart. Mm -hmm. So all the, the good part about that is you only need to remember one set of rules. Mm -hmm. Every, all your healthy eating, your good exercise, quitting smoking, keep your blood pressure under control. All of these are things that will prevent strokes as well as heart disease. After that, you need to know what the signs of stroke are, yes. and that they come on really fast, and if there's no good reason for a sudden change, then you need to be alert. You need to be alert. Right. So it could be muscle weakness on one side of the body and not the other side. So my face can be droopy, my hand can be weak, I may fall down because my leg is weak, mm -hmm. and it usually happens on one side of the body but not the other side. Right. Um, I may have trouble talking or even understanding what someone is saying to me. Mm -hmm. I may have vision changes, so things are blurry, or I may have blind spots. I may get suddenly very, very dizzy and off balance, and I may have a horrible, horrible, horrible headache. Or a headache. And, but not all the time. Sadly, most strokes don't have that horrible headache. Mm -hmm. If they did, more people would call for help quickly. Right, right. You don't have to have every one of the symptoms for it to be a stroke. Even one means that you need to call for help immediately. The faster the better because damage is being done that can't be taken back. Mm -hmm. So you have to get to the hospital and that means calling an ambulance mm -hmm. because you don't have lights and sirens on top of your car. Mm -hmm. You can't run the red lights. Right. And you can't call ahead and tell them, clear the decks. Yes. You know, the ambulance can do all of that. They can save lives up to an hour faster than if you got you my car. You draw yourself, right. Right. If you got in my car and I did my level best, the ambulance could still be giving you life-saving treatment an hour quicker. Yeah. That's, that makes all the difference. The faster you can help up. The better the results can be. Yes. You know, in, not only uh, saving lives, but also improving how well the recovery recovery is. Right. You know, I just want to go back a little bit because you you said something that I think is very vital, and I want to make sure that our audience doesn't miss that is that you don't have to have all the symptoms. Right. You could have just one or two. That's you know, right. so I think that's a very good point that you made. Yes, because every some people may think because they know someone who had a stroke that affected their speech and now stroke symptoms are showing up but it didn't include speech so maybe I don't think it means that it's a stroke. Exactly. Every stroke is going to be different and the reason strokes look so different is it all depends on what part of the brain is being damaged by the stroke at that moment. At that moment. Because our brain is divided into different spaces that have different jobs to do. Right. So if the part of your brain that does talking is damaged than speech shows speech up. Is up right. But if the part of the brain that shows up that deals with vision is damaged, the then eyes, eyes are going to be changed. So it, the symptoms will reflect the part of the brain that's being hurt. Mm -hmm. And that's why strokes look different from one person to another. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, you know what? Let's talk about the aftercare. Okay. Sadly, if a stroke happens, then you know the symptoms that you see that show what the stroke looks like. Mm -hmm are going to be a clue as to what kind of difficulties the person will have after the stroke 
happen. So their, their recovery challenges will reflect the symptoms. So I may have to have a speech therapist to help me learn to talk again. Mm-hmm. I'll have to have a physical therapist to help me walk again. Right. I may need to have you know, new ways to learn how to button up a shirt if I can't use one hand. Yes. So yes. rehab therapy is going to be critical to help learn things in a new way. But there's also possibly going to be personality changes that happen. Yes. Uh, one of our speakers today, one of our stroke survivors, talked about his challenge with depression all the time. Mm. This is a very common <coughs> aftermath of stroke. Because it affects the brain. Yes, and that's an important thing to know. It's not just because this person is just sad all the time right. and, and they can't shake it off. Right. The brain has been altered by the stroke that can make depression a real physical problem. Yes. And so we have to be aware of that. There can, there's going to be challenges for the people who care for that stroke. The caretakers. When we talk about strokes, we always say a stroke happens to a family. It doesn't happen to a single person. Right. And so Hannah's going to have challenges helping Richard with his recovery as every family who goes through stroke recovery Mm -hmm. does. So we have to take care of those caregivers as well. And that's why I encourage folks, you know, when you're asked, what can I do to help? Tell them what they can do to help. Tell them what they can do. Yeah, encourage encourage the support. The support. And don't feel like you have to be too strong because there's going to be days where you just can't be as strong as you wish you could be. Mm -hmm. And when you still have that support system out there, that helps everybody through the challenges. So Mm -hmm. I always encourage people to be real and never give up hope because things will get better. It may take a long time, but you hang in there and you lean on the support that's offered and things will get better. It will get better. That's some great tips. Uh, Would you like to share just some quick uh, encouraging words to Richard Dunn. Yeah, Richard, you know, I don't know you. We've never met, but I can tell you that I could feel the love and the support that was in the church today. Yes. Um, ju- your wife is just precious. I, I've had the opportunity to have some words with her, and you two are going to be a great team. She Amen. has let me in on some, I mean, she's let me know how much she loves you and cares for you and how you two are still working as a team that you still hold hands. <laughs> you still close the door yes. and and spend time together. And I told her you two are gonna learn a new dance together. New dance. And and that's that's good. You know, it's always good to learn new steps. And so I wish you all the best as you learn new steps. Um, I heard you as you talked on the telephone. I can see your sense of humor is still there. Yes. Your good wishes to your friends are still there. And so I just know that you are on a journey that, though it may be a long one, is going to be one that, uh, that you're going to be able to handle and with grace and with humor and with strength. And I wish you God's blessings on the entire journey. Yes. Thank you so much, Jane, for sharing My with pleasure. us. God bless you.